What's going on guys? Um, in this video, I just wanted to uh, basically talk about a couple things on why I believe, um, well, just in my experience, uh, that gargoyles are uh, the best pet gecko um, that you can have. Um, so it's really based on three main things before I go over that. This boy right here, this is, if he would show for a second, um, this is Dexter. He is from John Felicetti. Um, his Instagram is at Johnny at Johnny underscore Rex. If you want to uh, follow someone that has some pretty nice animals just all around, not just gargs, but a ton of stuff, definitely give him um, follow. It's hard to pick up because it's not the best of lighting. If you want to see good pics of this boy, uh, check him out on my Instagram, but he's actually really cool. Um, in person, and I really enjoy him. Um, but uh, first thing is their care, right? And this is, this might help maybe if you are on the edge of whether you should get you know a garg, a crested, a you know lychee, like just a gecko in general. Um, this will help you out, or if you want to get more, whatever. Uh, but the first thing is their care. They're super easy. That's something I look into because. You know, you got to think like uh, one day, if you want to go away, go on vacation for a couple of days, it's hard sometimes uh, with certain species because if they're, you know, if they need like bugs and, you know, specific care requirements and all that, you would want, you need someone that has the experience uh, to stay back and, you know, take care of them. And sometimes that's hard to find. Um, so first thing is the care. Uh, because you don't have to put much time into them. Um, they're easy to go out on vacation and have taken care of. And basically all you're doing is you're maintaining them at a temperature between 70 to 80 degrees. You're providing a proper enclosure, which you can spend a ton of money on or uh, not a lot of money on. And they'll be happy as well. Uh, you don't need to have, for gargs at least, you don't need to have insects or anything like that. Um, they can get away with just doing a hundred percent crested gecko diet or powder diet, whatever you want to call it. Although they will grow a little slower, um, and it's easy to maintain their hum humidity as well. You know, it's just spraying typically in my case once a day, uh, before I go to bed and that's pretty much it. And then all you got to do is just clean, clean them out, but you can have a bioactive enclosure and not have to clean them as well. So if you really want a, uh, you know, you like gargs, you like the look of them and everything like that, but you know, you also want it to be easy to take care of and you want to have, you know, the freedom to go places and not have to constantly stress about how they're doing. They're awesome um, for their care. Super simple. The second thing is actually um, their temperament. Now, as you can see, once he calms down, he's really chill. You know, he just hangs out. These are animals, oh, you know, they aren't going to, it's not going to threaten their health by taking them out and holding them. You know, they aren't aggressive unless you're mishandling them um, and, you know, irritating them. They aren't going to bite you or anything. They're just going to hang out. They're going to crawl around. They're going to jump. Um, they're going to do this, but you can hold them like this and not have to worry about it running across the room or, you know, losing it or anything like that. So it's really cool when you can have a beautiful animal that you can also hold um, as well. Obviously, there's a place for, you know, certain reptiles or animals that you just want to use as a display animal, but it honestly makes it 10 times better, in my opinion, if you can hold them because it keeps your interest going even longer in that species. Um, so that's one of the things I like about them, the temperament. Um, they're very relaxed once they get to know you, once you properly handle them um, and take care of them. Um, and they just like hanging out. So you can literally give this to, you know, you can have a guard, you can hand it to, you know, a kid that, that obviously knows to be gentle and everything, but you can hand one of them, they're not gonna have an issue. Um, at all handling them and they also have a personality sometimes you get that with certain reptiles you know they they're so basic and like how their brain works um that they don't really have much of a personality but they got these guys definitely do sometimes 
you know, that you'll have guards that make noises. They won't be chirping or anything when you pick them up. They're chill. Maybe they're kind of crazy. Sometimes that can happen. They like licking things. You know, there's a ton of different personalities that they have as well. Um, so that's pretty cool because each one is different. And the third thing is the breeding. This is probably the best part because um, not only is it simple to breed, which shouldn't be just a reason to get them, you know, because if you do want to breed them, you definitely want to do it. Not because you think you're going to make like a ton of money and that's the whole purpose. You can, but at the end of the day, you know, you got to do it because you love the species. Um, but the breeding, if you do love them and you get used to them, uh, it's very simple. You know, it's not anything crazy. As long as you have the right temps, you can pair them up in December or June. You know, it doesn't matter what month um, that they're in. Uh, so the breeding is real easy when you put them together. That's pretty much all you have to do. We can make another video on like going in depth on, excuse me, the different things that you can do um, to have a successful breeding but it's very simple it's not anything difficult um and uh the biggest part about that is these are in my opinion you know it's living art right you're literally they are basically a blank canvas you know you're taking a uh you know a red male pairing up to orange female and they have stripes you know you might be able to create red and orange striped uh, babies or a blotch in a stripe you know you can create like skeleton or something similar to that where you could see like the clear line of stripes going down his back mixed in um with the blotches as well basically gargs in my opinion you've only tapped into honestly probably like 25 percent of what's actually possible in the different morphs and uh, genetics that they can have because you know, as of right now, you do have like the phantom eyes, but it doesn't really, uh, what we know so far, what I know, at least, you know, it doesn't affect their pattern or anything. It's just the color of their eyes. Um, so, you know, you if you looked in like the, uh, like crested geckos over the last, you know, five years, it's crazy how many new morphs are coming out for those um, genetic, you know, morphs like the, uh, like lily whites or the exanthics um and recently the melanistics you know the, as of right now there's really not i mean people will say like melanistic gargs and that type of stuff but you really can't find um like much about that you know a lot of it seems to be either just a lack of knowledge of like people actually taking the time and you know, conducting actual real like research of pairing different gargs and seeing how it affects the pattern and, you know, collecting all that data. Maybe it's a lack of that or it's just, you know, there just isn't, it's not explored yet um, into the different actual genetics and everything like that. So in my opinion, um, there's a ton of untapped, you know, the genetics that's possible out there for the gargs. So that's one of my favorite things because you know, there's so much potential, uh, and like I was saying before, they're like an art piece. You know, you're basically creating whatever type of art that you want with these when you get the babies. Every single baby comes out different, so it's kind of like whenever you're waiting for that egg to hatch, it's kind of like a lottery. You might not know, you, you pair two blotches together, you can get stripes, and vice versa, two blotches together, I mean two stripes together, and you can get a blotch, you know, and all babies pretty much look uh, different. There's very few guards that actually look similar to each other. So whenever you're breeding them, that's the most exciting part. Uh, if you're, like I said, if you're truly passionate about the species, because you're going to have to take care of more, it's not going to be easy to just sell um, an animal. You know, at this point, people can kind of tell, you know, you, people give off, like if, if they're just doing something just because they want to profit off of it, and they don't really care. You know, you can tell. Um, so like I said, do it because you love them. But if you do love them, it's definitely worth it. You're an artist. They do the work, but you can pick whatever, you know, parents and, and put them together. And there's so many different combinations. And chances are they aren't going to look like any other gargs that are out there in the world. Every single one is at least a little bit different, 
which is really cool because it doesn't matter if you spend, you know, $2,000 or $200, whatever you create is your own, you know, that's, you, you, that's something that you envision and put together, um, and bred out. So it's really cool because at the end of the day, with their genetics being barely tapped, pretty much just think of what is an ideal, uh, guard, you know, what, whenever you look at them, what do you think is the best looking one, even if it doesn't exist yet, you can, I guarantee you, you know, five, 10 years down the line, you, you'll be able to make that. If your ideal garg is, you know, one with its head covered in color, that's possible. If you, if your ideal garg is, ideal garg is one that has their hand, their, uh, hands and feet covered in color, yeah, that's possible. If your ideal garg is just literally just a full back, it's possible. There's so many possibilities with them that it makes it really exciting once you put the time um, into actually being able to get to breed them. That is the thing, you know, that it does take time, so that's why you got to be passionate about it. But um, if you're just getting into gargs and you want to get more, um, go for it. You know, there's so much limitless possibilities out there on what's capable for them plus they're great pets to have um in my opinion as well and you a normal person can easily manage as long as you have the space and the money you know for it but time wise you can easily manage 20 to 30 you know geckos uh while doing a full-time job and having a life you know that's that's how simple their care is as long as you put the time in so I really love them. Um, those are my three biggest reasons on why, you know, I love them and I think they're the best gecko uh, because said so the care, it's simple. Um, the personality, they're chill. You can hold them. Um, each one is unique in the breeding. The colors, the possibilities are endless. You know, you can create so many things that still haven't been tapped um, in the garg. So you could eventually one day create your own unique garg that's never been seen before, you know, in the whole entire world. And it was just basically, you know, your picture in your mind, it's your blank canvas, you're the artist uh, for that. So yeah, they're pretty cool. But uh, if you guys ever have any questions or maybe you don't have a garg and you're looking to get into one and you just wanna learn more about them, like I always say, you know, feel free to uh, shoot me a message or an email. I'm going to put that in the description below my Instagram, Facebook, and uh, the email. You can shoot me a message and, you know, ask me whatever you need to ask me. Um, or if you want to get more or need some help with something, you know, just let me know. But other than that, uh, give me a follow on Instagram. That's where I'm going to post all my stuff at, uh, at Red Rack. And if you have any questions, don't ever hesitate to reach out. I'm always here. Um, if you need help and everything. So thanks. Hopefully maybe this would help uh, some people that maybe might be on edge uh, about getting a guard um, or maybe you need to convince someone else or you just want to get more. Either way, hopefully this helps guys, but thanks for watching.